I think the big thing is people are skipping the foundational pieces. I mean, it's it's fine if you just want to go sign up for a class and try to go get active. But really, I would say get some of these labs run first. Get your gut looked at so we can see what type of bacterial overgrowth you have. As I mentioned, this is an epidemic problem. This is not a rare situation. And the gut could be one of the big wrenches in your gears that's not allowing you to lose the weight properly. And like I said, I have people literally lose 75 pounds just by fixing some of these strategies, like fixing digestion. Now, for some people, it could go the other way. Some of these issues with females, it'll cause weight loss, and they're having issue with getting muscle back, back, you know, building it back. And so it depends. It depends on where you're at. Some, they, they lose muscle and they still have body fat, but they're thin. They're like a skinny fat, they call it. You know, you could have a woman who's five foot two and she's 140 pounds. And then all of a sudden she gets sick, loses weight. Now she's 120, but she still looks flabby. That could just be because she's lost that muscle due to malabsorption, due to these infections like H. pylori. You and I have talked about the story of me where I lost 25 pounds without trying. I didn't really have much weight to lose, but I got super skinny due to my gut infections. And so it took me literally several years to build the muscle back. But the first step to building back was to get rid of the gut infections and then start working on detox. I had a ton of mold toxin issues, and that really screwed up my metabolism to where I was, I was very hangry, like two to three hours I'd have to eat. And no matter what, no matter if it was a grass-fed steak or what, and now I could literally go from 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. without food, and I feel perfectly fine. I feel satiated. My brain works better. I have more mental clarity. So a lot of it's the, as you mentioned, it's the blood sugar involvement too. So you have to fix that. 110%. So like the big checklist out of the gates is don't do too much carbohydrate. Too much carbohydrate, too much sugar will make you a little bit flabby, whether it's through cortisol, whether it's through inflammation, oxidative stress. Of course, if you're eating a lot more carbs, right? You're probably not getting enough protein typically, right? Unless you're someone who's um, higher metabolism and, and really and really making sure proteins and carbs are dialed in and you're doing a lot of activity. Most people, if they do too much carbs, too much sugar, they tend to not be getting enough protein. So half your body weight in grams is usually pretty decent out of the gates. And then you can go up to one gram per pound of body weight, depending on how active you are. So some are going to be good. Most, most women are going to be good somewhere between a half to maybe two thirds to three quarters. And now then a the lot beginning, of your male, male people that are wanting to get really big, they may want to be one gram per pound of body weight. That's kind of a good sliding scale. Now in the beginning, I was saying, I don't think people need to count, measure, weigh, and then now you're giving numbers. So I just want to clarify kind of where I am with it. I think you can and should to get a ballpark of where you're at based on your meals, but you should not be obsessing about it. You yeah, so I keep like it really looking. simple, right? And so what is um, what is about four ounces of protein is going to be about 25 to 30 grams of protein, right? And so for most women, that's going to be about a palm to a fist size. And so when you're looking at picking up, you know, you're serving yourself a meal. It's very simple. You know, there's no weighing or measuring. You're just kind of like, what is about a palm to a fist size in regards to my hand, in regards to that serving of protein on the plate? And you just scoop yourself up that amount anyway, and that's your amount. So there's no real crazy amount of weighing or measuring. It's just kind of eyeballing kind of your own anatomy comparatively to what's on the plate. And that's usually a pretty good rule of thumb. And you know you did pretty good is because you're going to feel satiated after that meal. You're going to eat. About 10 minutes after you finish eating, the goal is we want to feel satiated enough where we can go four to five hours to the next meal. So that kind of gives you enough where we're not pulling on a scale, we're not having a measure, but you you got to know that like in the end, if you're eating enough, well, what does that really mean? Really? You ate some size amount. What is that size? It's probably going to be between three and five ounces of protein on average, and then you can just use your hand as a good frame of reference when you're serving yourself up. Keep it simple. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for clarifying that.